The second session, the topic is called uh, Internet Governance in the Real World and the Role of Like and, and the Internet Community. And we have uh, five speakers. The first speaker, if I pronounce your name bad, sorry about it, I apologize. The first one is uh, Olga Golovoko. Am I right? Well, of course, yeah. <laughs> Good. The second one is uh, Natalia uh, NZB Loba. It's okay? Natalia. And yeah, the okay. third, good. The third one is uh, Yanni Graces. Is it right? Okay. Because uh, my friend in Finland, he also is called Yanni. So I instead of a Johnny, say Yanni. It's okay for you? Yeah, no problem. Good. We are very close neighboring uh, countries, so that's very okay. similar. Okay, the next one is uh, Sen Xin Xiong. It's uh, the I can get representative from Taiwan. Good the evening, everyone. One, yes, thank you. The last one is uh, Kenny Huang. He is the CEO of the TW NIC and also is the executive council for the AP, AP NIC and also the board member uh, chair of the NIEPA. So, Kenny, thanks for your coming. Thank you. Okay, and so basically, this is a topic we are going to talk about. And then, just I'm saying, uh, I try to split <coughs> the session into two different subsession. Each subsession will be about forty minutes, and then, uh, and then we have a second subsession. So, hopefully, we can have a chance to do the dialogue and also. Uh, making the uh, you know uh, uh, presentation uh, from all the different view in this uh, topics. And the first of all, I like to share uh, just a two slide about it. It's uh, the early day of the internet governance. I think uh, the early day of that is uh, 1997. The U.S. White House <laughs> have a five paper. It's called Create a Framework of the Global Electronic Commons, uh, which is start of the internet uh, worldwide. And but there's uh, some of the debate uh, between the technology and also the governance issue, particularly the IANA management. Uh, so UN uh, hold uh, two World Summit of the Internet Society, which is in the 2003 in Geneva and 2005 in uh, Tunis. <clears throat> By 2005, there is a working group of internet governance uh, appointed by the UN, and they come out to have a report on the working group of the internet governance to define what kind of topic of the issue on internet government guy like to deal with. So I think this is uh, the early day, you know, uh, before the 2005. And then after the 2005, eventually the transmission of the ICANN into the global body. And then it's uh, authority over the DNS management and appropriate and accountable for uh, the shareholder in the government, private sector, and civic society. So we call is a multi-stakeholder, and I think this is uh, basically in the early day of the internet governance and what we are talking about. Then by the 2016, uh, Vincent William Drake and also Wolfgang uh, published a report. So talking about the internet fragmentation and overview in WEF in 2016. Since then, uh, there is a lot of argument or debate about one world, one internet compared with uh, spring internet. And I think uh, today, uh, I'm very happy to have uh, five um, speakers to join me. And 
uh, as I'm saying, I will go on based on who will be do the presentation first. Uh, I will go to the uh, Olga first. And I think the Olga is uh, trying to talk about is a uh, current initiative and the, uh, the issue in the Ukraine. And I think uh, this is also part of the government issue. So I think most of the people are interested about how the governance can doing the good job in in this uh, Olga's presentation. So hopefully Olga can share our show us about her study or research. Olga, it's your time now, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, it's really an honor to be here with you. And uh, I want to introduce this uh, complex, but also very interesting topic uh, about crypto initiatives uh, uh, in Ukraine in general and uh, uh, according to these conditions and uh, situations uh, uh, with war in Ukraine. So. Uh, I should say that, of course, we have this uh, negative impact and uh, it's uh, really important to see uh, when government use uh, really uh, innovative initiatives to actually uh, prevent uh, the war or actually to counteract the aggression. So uh, the next slide is uh, uh, just general information about me, uh, myself, uh, so you can uh, contact uh, me by the mail, for example, if uh, uh, in case we have this uh, limit of time, uh, we can discuss uh, this topic more by uh, personally. So, uh, let's start from the beginning and uh, I want to uh, to tell you more about the uh, main features of cryptocurrency, maybe some of you uh, has already this experience, uh, have already this experience, but maybe uh, some don't uh, uh, know this uh, topic at all. So uh, just a few words uh, about these uh, features. First of all, of course, it's about self-governance and uh, uh, self-managed. Uh, uh, actually, uh, industry because uh, transactions are stored by miners on their hardware and they get their transaction fee as a reward. Of course, uh, there are uh, not also the uh, proof of work uh, direction, but also uh, you can find the uh, proof of uh, uh, stake direction, but it's uh, uh, just another topic of the discussion. Uh, I propose to go further to the next feature. Uh, the next feature of uh, cryptocurrency is a decentralized uh, uh, feature. So it helps uh, keep the currency monopoly free. Uh, no one organization can determine the flow and the value of the coin. So uh, as you can see, uh, no governments or states uh, has this uh, impact on uh, uh, the cryptocurrency. Uh, uh, the next feature is secure and private. So, uh, for example, if you create the uh, crypto asset, uh, uh, the uh, automatic system uh, actually uh, create these mnemonic phrases uh, to control uh, the uh, to give you this control to this uh, your personal asset. And it's very important to say that uh, uh, the uh, asset has its uh, uh, its individual uh, number, but nobody knows uh, that uh, it's your assets until you uh, make this number public. Uh, but still, uh, even uh, in the case that uh, uh, you don't connect uh, this uh, number of the asset uh, with you, uh, your person uh, in the public uh, space, uh, still uh, all the uh, actually all persons can use this uh, number and find out uh, the uh, cash flow uh, from the um, 
from the one asset to another. So it's really interesting, uh, interesting topic for lawyers uh, because on the one hand, uh, it's uh, uh, really a high level of uh, security and privacy, but on the other hand, uh, there can be some uh, abuse of uh, such power, and unfortunately, um, we also should uh, uh, should work with these uh, threats. Uh, transnational uh, features, so you can be everywhere and only having the access to your uh, wallet, to your assets and uh, crypto asset, I mean, and uh, the number of uh, the uh, other assets you can send uh, uh, your uh, your money or your crypto coins uh, to the every uh, every world uh, every uh, country in the world and uh, uh, actually it's not the really high uh, level of uh, uh, fee in this case uh, fast uh, it's actually the uh, uh, combined um, uh, features with uh, transnational and no refu uh, refund and cancellation policy. And this feature is uh, uh, also very interesting because uh, uh, if we take into consideration that uh, uh, cryptocurrency in general is uh, decentralized, it means that uh, uh, nobody control the uh, this fear, uh, let's say, and nobody can uh, can give you uh, some kind of uh, refunds or uh, cancellation policy in case of uh, uh, I don't know some kind of scam or something like that. So uh, all the uh, safety of your uh, crypto assets uh, is about your uh, your let's say. Um, uh, cyber literacy, first of all. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, you can get acquainted with uh, uh, our uh, crypto initiative of the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. It's really uh, great and really helpful. You can find more details by this hashtag. And uh, also, I send you this uh, official number, uh, official web page, sorry. So it's really interesting to uh, see uh, these uh, tool in practice and how these the initiative really helps to counteract the aggression, Russian aggression, now in our uh, our war. Uh, so uh, here on this link, you can find financial reports uh, and fresh information about the initiative. All. Um, all transactions uh, and so on and so forth. But also, uh, you can find you can use the uh, technical uh, tool to uh, scan uh, all of these uh, crypto assets and find out uh, this uh, transaction in or out transactions. So, in, uh, uh, what about general information? You can find out from this web page that. Uh, uh, the community has already raised more than uh, 60 million dollars and uh, uh, here you can also find out the uh, official report from the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine uh, <coughs> on the date uh, April, 14, uh, April 14. So what about the next slide please? What about the technical uh, issues of uh, uh, of uh, these uh, crypto assets and actually uh, not, uh, let's say, issues, but benefits of using it. Uh, so, uh, as you can remember, uh, the crypto asset is private before uh, the public figure or a private person uh, just say that, yes, this is my wallet, this is my asset. So, uh, actually, by um, this uh, uh, publication uh, on the official website um, web page, uh, the Ministry of uh, Digital Transformation shows that uh, this is their uh, crypto assets, and uh, they use this uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, 
crypto coins to help uh, uh, in the war uh, which is now in Ukraine. And uh, for example, technically you can use uh, uh, every every site. For example, uh, if uh, uh, you can find out uh, you want to find out uh, the um, the transactions on this crypto asset uh, uh, in Bitcoin. You just uh, uh, tap in uh, Google uh, Bitcoin scan and use uh, uh, some of these web pages. Uh, just uh, uh, tap the the number of the asset and you can find out all the transactions uh, uh, from this asset not only in transactions but also out and here i uh, take another example not from the ministry of digital transformation of ukraine but uh, the uh, example of uh, crypto wallets of cyber uh, police of ukraine they also create such kind of cyber uh, such kind of crypto wallets uh, due to the war and uh, it also helps us to uh, to uh, actually uh, um, pr prevent some um, some war uh, problems in Ukraine now. So uh, using of uh, this money, you can find out uh, uh, where uh, they are spent, not only from the official web page, but also just by uh, knowing the number of these assets. So it's really great. I, I believe it's really great to use this uh, technical uh, tool uh, for lawyers because they can compare uh, the real uh, transactions and uh, the official reports and uh, maybe find out some uh, some problems with it so uh, it's very important to uh, show that uh, mm, you know it's uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, full and global transparency uh, in the question of uh, uh, using crypto assets uh, in public sphere. So uh, the next slide, please. Uh, what about this initiative uh, of uh, Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. So uh, there are uh, three main uh, subjects and initiators of uh, uh, this uh, initiative. First of all, of course, it's this ministry. Uh, the next one is uh, Everstake and the third one is uh, Kuna. You can find out their representatives of the uh, huge uh, crypto projects and why are they so active in helping Ukraine uh, because first of all uh, there are a lot of people from Ukraine who actually work uh, uh, in the crypto industry blockchain industry and uh, uh, Everstake and Kuna is not an, uh, uh, let's say, uh, an excludence of uh, this example. So uh, it's also very important to admit that from the legal point of view, Everstake and Kuna, they have uh, official uh, registration in uh, uh, some countries. For example, Kuna is uh, the group of uh, companies. So you can find out the legal system where they were registered and it's very important uh, when uh, there are uh, the initiative uh, from the uh, public uh, figures like uh, Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine uh, which use not the uh, let's say uh, um, let, uh, let's say like uh, gray entities which uh, don't have the registrations or there are some issues with these uh, registrations uh, so it's uh, really important to get these trustful partners in case of uh, uh, creating such kind of uh, kind of initiatives. The next slide, please. Uh, I try to be uh, as uh, brief as possible uh, due to the limit of time. So uh, now you can find out uh, the uh, main crypto uh, assets which you can find uh, on this uh, official uh, page uh, from this uh, Ministry of Digital Transformation. And uh, the question is why uh, only these crypto assets? So uh, first of all, um, I should say that it was the uh, 
the main criteria to find out the capitalization of uh, uh, such crypto coins. So, of course, uh, the, the most uh, famous as uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Solana, Polkadot, uh, Cardano, uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, absolutely uh, clear why uh, uh, actually partners uh, with the Ministry of Digital Transformation uses these uh, uh, crypto coins uh, to actually create their uh, assets for help in Ukraine in this war. Next slide, please. Uh, I also want to talk more about the uh, legislation in Ukraine about uh, uh, crypt uh, crypto industry, blockchain industry, and uh, it's very important to admit that uh, admit that before uh, the war uh, on February February 17 uh, in uh, 2022, the uh, law of Ukraine on virtual assets uh, was adopted, uh, but uh, there were, were uh, a lot of uh, amendments to this plot. That's why uh, um, there uh, there wasn't so fast to um, to actually this uh, law of Ukraine uh, act uh, now. And uh, um, I can say that. Um, uh, for example, one of the condition why why we don't uh, uh, use uh, use this uh, law uh, yet because uh, uh, this is uh, uh, let's say the requirement from the legislature uh, to uh, take some amendments also in. Uh, uh, tax code of Ukraine, civil code of Ukraine, uh, because we need to um, to actually use this law correct. But still, you can find you can find more information about uh, the uh, the uh, some um, definitions, uh, legal definitions uh, uh, about virtual asset, virtual asset wallet, uh, asset keys. For example, these uh, mnemonic phrases, as we mentioned uh, uh, late uh, earlier, and. Uh, uh, who is the participants of this uh, virtual asset market? So it's uh, really the uh, let's say uh, a big uh, uh, step um, to the um, actually legalization of uh, uh, virtual assets uh, in uh, Ukraine and uh, uh, take this uh, international experience uh, how to actually uh, we can use this uh, uh, tool uh, to protect the state from the uh, external aggression. And uh, also, uh, I want to talk uh, to you with some legal issues uh, uh, about this initiative. For example, uh, how, yeah, thank you, the, the next slide. Uh, how uh, the, uh, actually, what is the procedure of creating these wallets? Uh, who actually create these wallets? So uh, now we can see that uh, it's not uh, uh, very, um clear uh, clear procedure how uh, we can do it but still but still uh, we can say that uh, this uh, uh, initiative uh, is working now and uh, i hope we'll uh, continue even uh, after uh, war um, so uh, it's very important to make the procedure uh, as clear as it's possible for uh, publicity and for the uh, people who actually want to uh, to um, participate in this uh, uh, charity um, activity, charity activity. The next legal issues for uh, this initiative is about trading uh, because uh, uh, the uh, the trading is uh, one of the um, interesting economic and legal uh, part of uh, uh, and legal part of how uh, and when uh, some coins uh, are selling and uh, what is the reason of their selling and for example how they uh, they actually um, 
go from the uh, crypto coins to uh, fiat uh, coins, let's say. And uh, also it's about responsible departments, representatives and fund managers. So as you can see, for uh, making this, uh, uh, this initiative uh real in the legal way of course uh there should be really um, a huge amount of experts which uh, uh, can help uh, to uh use this uh, uh crypto tool correctly and uh, uh, with uh, the uh with more benefits let's say uh, another one is about these partners. Uh, actually, I've already mentioned this uh, when we were talking about the uh, legal uh, registration of these partners. And uh, uh, the uh, last legal issue is, uh, for me personally, uh, it's uh, the system of permits and prohibitions to prevent some abuse uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, in case of using these uh, crypto assets, I mean, if uh, it's crypto assets uh, uh, public and from some uh, some kind of uh, state bodies uh, or uh, from government governments. So it's really important to uh, know all the uh, let's say rules of this game uh, to show the. Um, the importance of uh, uh, and uh, transparency of uh, um, these initiatives. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, I want to say that uh, keeping secure, stable, and uh, interoperable uh, internet required to be more aware of uh, vulnerabilities of blockchain technologies, but still we should uh, uh, take into, into consideration that. Uh, um, we still actually uh, use these uh, blockchain technologies with or without law. So it's very important to uh, prevent this, uh, let's say, chaos uh, in using uh, crypto uh, assets and uh, benefits from uh, crypto industry and uh, make it uh, as clear as it's possible. Uh, in the legal uh, way. And uh, the next slide, please. Uh, I want to say before uh, <laughs> saying this uh, phrase uh, uh, about your attention, I want to um, uh, I want to uh, also pay attention to this uh, uh, this picture. It's not just a picture. It's uh, the uh, picture from NFT collections, uh, also uh, which was created to uh, to help uh, uh, financial and uh, in the uh, information direction uh, in this uh, war. Uh, and this uh, Russian aggression. So, um, as you can see, crypto industry in general is a great tool to uh, help the world and uh, from, from the, to get this help from the world, uh, civilized world, of course, and from the uh, actually private uh, persons which uh, want to help to, pr uh, to prevent this. Uh, uh, this aggression from uh, one country to another or uh, from this uh, global, uh, uh, let's say, uh, armed conflicts. Uh, so it, it's uh, like under um, under the, um, not the power of uh, the state, but also the uh, power of uh, uh, private persons, uh, which actually can be still, uh, still, uh, um, incognito, let's say. Uh, so thanks for your attention now. There is a lot of questions uh, which I want to discuss, but still we have a limit of time. Thank you. Oh, unfortunately, I didn't hear you at all. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Yes. Uh, there is uh, one question in the chat room. It's a, it's a great speak of the blockchain opportunity. But one word for the thought is a, what is a safeguard is in place to prevent the breach. Do you have any idea about that? Uh, actually, it, it's uh, uh, very hard to he to uh, hear you because uh, it's oh, okay. too. Um... Hello, Olga. Do you hear me? It's got this police. Uh, I believe it's some problem with my devices, but I can see uh, the question in chat. Is it okay. about that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. J just a sec. I'll get acquainted with it. <laughs> just a sec. Um... Mm, I, I see. So uh, actually, uh, uh, if answering uh, on this question, I, I should say that uh, it's more technical question than uh, than legal. So uh, we can uh, discuss it like uh, uh, like oh, the uh, future event, maybe. Okay. And of course, okay. uh, there are a lot of discussions uh, about uh, this topic with. Uh, uh quantum computing age but uh, yeah. uh, still now it's uh, it seems like uh, uh let's say like uh, how is it so, uh, non fiction uh, yeah <laughs> uh, but okay. still uh, it was about com uh, computers uh, uh too so we should uh, uh, take uh, this serious uh, this uh, uh, threat of uh, uh, quantum computing age and the problem of using blockchain technologies and opportunities uh, due to this uh, new kind of uh, uh, world uh, after uh, creating quantum comp uh, computers so okay. um, it's very, okay, it's, I, I think it's I better think to discuss in this the, yeah, question yeah. in the technical uh, yeah. way, but also lawyers can join this discussion to oh, find Yanni, out how you want to join? Yeah. Yanni, please. Yes, yeah, okay. Please I have one question, Tolga. Uh, so, um, Ukraine has its best wish to become candidate member of European Union. And within EU, we pay a lot of attention to anti money laundering. So I have one very yeah. small question. How you are struggle with money laundering in Ukraine in connection with the new law on, on crypto assets? Mm -hmm. I see. So uh, actually, as I mentioned, uh, we have this uh, uh, legislature, uh, uh, legislative initiative about the uh, law of Ukraine on virtual assets. So it's really important that uh, we actually uh, adopted this uh, uh, law uh, in our legislations. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, you, get, uh, you can uh, get uh, acquainted with the uh, context of this law. I can say that uh, uh, if we are talking about the uh, laundry issues, uh, actually, it's uh, uh, not only uh, the problem of Ukraine, but uh, uh, in all the world, uh, I should say that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, law uh, can actually help uh, to prevent such kind of uh, uh, abuse of uh, this uh, uh, crypto uh, benefits. So it's very important to uh, find out uh, how we can um, we can use uh, the law to prevent, uh, let's say, uh, these uh, technical benefits uh, in future okay. uh, and okay. actually now. And uh, uh, I also want to say that uh, uh, this uh, law of Ukraine, I hope that this, uh, this will uh, work from the, let's say, September of this year uh, because of uh, some amendments in different codes of Ukraine, like tax and civil code. And uh, I believe uh, then we can discuss it uh, uh, more, um, let's say, more um, um, concrete. Okay, I think, uh, young Olga, thank you very much. I think uh, I, I love to leave some of the questions to the end. 
you know, I wish uh, the other speaker can present them first. It's okay. Uh, can you stay in the tune? And so when end of the presentation and we're coming back to, uh, you bring a lot of questions for us though. So I think it's a very good presentation. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, Natalia. Uh, let me bring up your slide. Natalia, please. Hi, okay, good, good. Yes, yes. I have a degree with honors. I graduated from Yaroslav, the Vice National Law University. I'm a certified attorney, a lawyer, attorney, a member of the bar in Ukraine. I I have 10 years of experience in law, including right law and contracting and litigation. Um, first of all, I would like to say that I'm very pleasure that President of Greek from me, Mr. Kuawei Wu, and also the and uh, Professor National Young Man, uh, Min Kichiao Tung University School of Law, Mr. Thomas Chen, and for this opportunity to discuss about, about the one of the necessary questions, internet government. Uh, today, Ukraine is struggling in many areas, including defense, its territory against Russian troops, economic development at the time when Russia is destroying uh, important infrastructure and stealing grain, metals and other minerals, as well as in the internet space, including uh, Russia propaganda, cyber attacks, uh, publication of sites, introductions of technologies for data storage, development of virtual worlds, and other. Natalia, we cannot hear you. Natalia, we cannot hear you. There's some problems with the connection, I think. Natalia, uh, can you stop or we can I hear you? I think it's a connection problem. Natalia, we cannot hear you. Um. Um. Do you hear yes. me? Um. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Yes. I Yes, okay, I, uh, I, uh, with, without video, and I, I don't know when, uh, <laughs> when, okay, uh, okay, um, okay. Uh, I would like to say about uh, what uh, does the internet consist of, uh, about the level of internet, and the first level of the internet is the level of uh, interest infrastructure, it's uh, network cables, routers, and protocols. Responsibility for determining the content of communication lies with smart service and users at the ends of the network, and the intermediary is only responsible for transmission message along the chain. Intermediaries do not check or interfere with content and in any significant way when it passes through their network. This level is based on the principle of neutral network. 
end-to-end. -end. The second level is the code uh, level, so software that uh, runs at the ends of the network to interact with the users. The third level of the internet is contact of material that is transmitted over over the network infrastructure selected and presented by code. Often, when it comes to regulating the internet, people are not talking uh, about the internet uh, itself, which consists of three levels, but about trying to regulate contact, information transmitted. Um, for example, propaganda, uh, disclosure of private information, slander, pornography, copyright and infragment, infra um, and other. Uh, the society has uh, um, the society has uh, repeatedly faced uh, the issue of internet regulation. There are supporters of complete freedom of the internet. The internet is a new border free. Um, uh, sorry, the internet a new border free from regulation. It say uh, this said uh, John Perry Barlow. For example, uh, Lawrence Lessing uh, in turn emphasizes court is a law. Software rules can be as powerful as the laws uh, of nation states that govern the behavior of citizens. However, government agencies, as well as international organizations, unions in turn regulate the internet and appropriate level. Um, I will use the example of the European Union to talk about some of the organization. Uh, BEREC, uh, body of European regulators for electronic communications which aims to promote the better functions of the internal market for electronic communications, network and services in order to ensure consistent implementation of the regulatory framework for electronic communication. In this regard, including proposals for improving the legislative proposals in the field of electronic communications. The European Commission adopted a decision that authorized BEREC membership without voting rights for the National Commission for the State Regulation of Electronic Communication of Ukraine. This means that, that Ukrainian regulator can take part in the day-to-day -day work of BEREC, the Board of Regulators, and that Ukraine may appoint experts to join in BEREC working group. Accordingly, Ukraine can work to approximate its uh, legislation with the European Union legislation. Uh, the, next, uh, the next is the uh, European uh, Cyber Security Agency, or ENISA. Uh, ENISA performs the following tax, uh, tasks. Promoting the consistent, uh, consistent application of the current legal framework, in particular through the effective implementation of directive of Europe uh, EU um, uh, 20, uh, 2060, um, 11, uh, 48, and other relevant legal instruments relating to aspects of cybersecurity security that are important for uh, in, uh, enhancing cyber uh, resilience. Uh, assisting member states and the, the unions, uh, institutions, bodies, offices, and agencies in their efforts to build and uh, strengthen their um, capacity and preparedness to prevent, detect, uh, and uh, repeal cyber. Uh, threats and incidents related to the security of network and information uh, systems. Uh, please, uh, next uh, slide. Uh, yes. Yep. Um, how? Ne uh, yes. Yes. Th thank you yep. so much. Um, uh, next, it's NIS Cooperation Group. 
uh, consisting of representatives of e EU uh, member states, the European Commission and the uh, ENISA. The tasks of uh, the group are described in uh, Article 11 of the ENISA directive, which include the exchange of practice and experience in matters related to the security of the network and the information systems and the provision of strategy management of the uh, C uh, CSIRT network. Uh, next, it's uh, um, uh, uh, third EU uh, computer. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Yes. Um, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, third EU computer MNG response team. Uh, for the European Union institutions, agencies, and bodies uh, of the pandemic uh, 11th, 2012. Um, the team is made up of IT security experts from the main European Union institution, European Commission, General Secretariat of the Council, European Parliament, Committee of the Regions Economic and Social Committee. It cooperates uh, closely with other uh, certs in the member states and beyond, as well as with the spe specialized IT security companies. As we can see, the European Union now has relevant bodies that carry out bad legislative work and uh, measures to increase uh, uh, cybersecurity. Despite the uh, diversi uh, diversification of bodies that deal with security issues, uh, supervise the uh, observance of customer rights on the internet and introduce a legal mechanism to regulate internet security. Uh, the war in Ukraine has shown the importance of creating a single body that cloud respond uh, immediately to the state's request uh, to events and uh, to accept the corresponding order on blocking or restriction of activity of uh, certain internet resources. In addition, funding for relevant resources uh, should be uh, monitored as one way to avoid online regulation is to use a virtual private network, VPN. A VPN creates, uh, creates an uh, encrypted tunnel from an entry point uh, in one jurisdiction to an exit point in another. Users can also create duplicate sites, transfer information to other services to continue their illegal activities. Uh, that is, we can observe so, uh, the so-called Streisand effect. Uh, in Ukraine, it is appropriate to note a similar situation arose after Medvedchuk lawsuit to ban Vakhan Kipiani's book, The Case of Vasil Stus. When something is banned, it can uh, lead to the opposition, dissemination of information. Uh, therefore, a restrictive warrants uh, court order may not lead to be desired results without uh, com uh, comprehensive, uh, uh, com comprehensively designed actions, uh, including by identifying financial flows and limiting them. For example, in the case of the issues of court order by British court on the application of the Film Association to block access to the site uh, Newsbin 2. The substance of the dispute was as follows. Newsbin provided a search uh, through the Usenet program uh, for movies that were carried out in violation of copyrighting. The High Court of the United Kingdom found Newsbin liable for copyrighted uh, in, uh, infringement and the company was liquidated and its website closed. Two weeks later, uh, news been rose uh, from uh, the ashes. 
someone copied the entire code base of the old site and return it on online or on a survey survey in the um, Seychelles outside the uh, the jurisdiction of the United Kingdom. Uh, the MPA has returned to court this time, demanding a ban that that would require uh, British providers to block access to the website. The court issued their ruling, noting an extension of laws uh, originally designed to block websites that posted material about child sexual abuse. Uh, subsequently, the site closed after a significant uh, reduction in traffic. Another, another example is the self-blocking hosting sites. Uh, for example, uh, Cloudflare is, um, uh, uh, is a reverse proxy server that provides the uh, network with uh, fast content, uh, don downloads and protection against attacks, uh, abandoned hosting for the neo-Nazi uh, site Daily Storm. The ref uh, refusal was caused by the Daily St uh, Storm saying that Cloudfire is a supporter of their ideology. The blocking was not in connection with a court order, but on the basis of Cloudfire's internal regulations. It is worth uh, nothing that, wo that for a long time Cloudfire didn't respond to requests from hackers who attacked uh, the Daily Storm and tried to get them over the internet. Uh, speaking of the protection of intellectual property rights, um, uh, right holders have been able to uh, develop new technologies to detect the potential copyright um, infringement and deal with in uh, it uh, automatically automatically youtube content id for example automatically detects when a person uses copyright in music in their video and copyrights uh, owners are presented with an easy choice to block access to the video remove the soundtrack leave it alone or run at uh, alongside uh, it uh, in my opinion, it is uh, important to conclude a single joint agreement between countries and companies that provide the Internet on Internet regulation. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I am I am uh, sorry emphasize, emphasizes that uh, this is not about restricting the freedom of speech or the right of cons uh, consumers or to receive information. And we are talking about the possibility of timely response to events that could lead to greater losses. We are talking about propaganda, uh, incitement to uh, hatred or to the uh, disclosure of information. Um, uh, this is a joint commitment uh, to guarantee rights. Such guarantees can be set out by borrowing to the regulatory system from the European Union by adopting a directive with the right of the sub subjects of independent detailed regulation of relations, as well as the development of the methods aimed at protecting the rights and freedoms of Internet users from um, identify, uh, identifying and stopping funding for organization to create a software code aimed and at ending violations of rights. Thank you for attention. And I, um, I hope that um, um, my uh, not good internet uh, uh, that I can uh, see what uh, <clears throat> that you uh, you can uh, hear what I uh, <laughs> what uh, I try to to uh, to say to say to say you yep. about yep. Uh, uh, about internet regulation and yep. uh, um, how it's important today and uh, how it may be. Um, um, yeah. um, that uh, the um, government, the comp a company, need to regulate uh, um, some. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Well, actually, as I as I as I mentioned before, you know, I can is not a international organization under the treaty, so uh, the the I can do not have a public authority, and the method of the you know the the problem resolved is also the same as uh, your almost the last uh, slide. You will go to the court, you know, very general as a current uh lawsuit uh, practice so okay uh the next one i like to invite the yanni uh when a minute i bring your slide up when i minute, give me minutes i bring your slide up okay yeah uh, yanni is yours okay uh, dear colleagues and friends, um, it's my pleasure to be here and thanks for the invitation to participate in this webinar. Of course, I would like to prefer to meet somewhere face to face, either in Taiwan yeah. or Ukraine or in Latvia. I yeah. hope that one can make one good. meeting face to face because I hate this internet for meeting, you know. <laughs> I like internet for reading, getting information. But I hate for the meetings. It's <laughs> awful, you know. But okay. Understand. Yes. Um, and um, I will focus my presentation uh, mainly from the point of view of international public law, because I'm a doctor of international law, so this is my uh, favorite subject, so and so. Um, okay, please next slide. Um, so I will start with this slide and nice picture. Nice or bad, it's up to you. What I have taken from the internet. What is the advantage of internet? That we could see everything, what happens on the world immediately. If somebody waging war, he must calculate that anybody on this planet will see what happens. And here you see this uh, disaster in Kharkiv city. I have been in Kharkiv city in September 2019, before the war. I saw this nice city. I have good cooperation with uh, Yaroslav the Wise National Law University. I know personally all these people with wise sectors and so on. So, and I knew what was before, before the war. And now Kharkiv, at least part of Kharkiv, it's in ruins. And therefore, as I said, let's say if you compare the First World War and the Second World War, we saw these pictures usually only after the war. Now we could see momentarily at the same day. When something happens, you see what has happened in Ukraine. Please, uh, next slide. So, and probably this war between Russia and Ukraine, this is the first large scale war in Europe which is a full combination of conventional war, informative war, and plus also this uh, hybrid war. I think it's first time in the history of Europe, because the last war in Europe, real war, was uh, in the former Yugoslavia 25 years ago. At that moment, spread internet was not so high as now, you know, and therefore information was always a bit late what happens in former uh, Yugoslavia. And also I want to take into account that uh, this war between Russia and Ukraine started already some 20 years ago, starting with some hybrid war, with some Russian news that they told that, for example, Ukraine is artificial country, for example, or failed state, so and so. By the way, I was uh, uh, last week in one international conference and I met colleagues from Croatia. And I was surprised that a comparatively experienced uh, lawyer could say me that, let's say, Ukraine was made by uh, Mr. Lenin. It was not true because uh, Ukraine was already before the Moscow country appeared at all, you know. But still, you know, with disinformation, used internet, any kind of uh, mass propaganda, TV, and so on, so was disseminated in Europe, you know. Just telling that Ukraine, for example, is artificial country or a failed state. 
Of course, also now we face a lot of these cyber attacks, disinformation. We have these Facebook battles between, let's say, supporters of the Mr. Putin and supporters of the Ukraine, you know? So it all works now in real time, in real war between uh, two uh, countries. My colleague Gattis Pauls already told uh, uh, one uh, week uh, ago about these attacks that happened also in Latvia, also from the side of uh, some Russian hackers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I will not stop here. And what's more interesting is that still they have huge propaganda on Russian TV that there is only so-called just a special military operation, not a war. From point of international law, I understand why Putin using this uh, special term, special military operation, not to mention where the war, you know. Therefore, in some voting United Nations, some countries saying, okay, we are neutral, you know, there's no war, there's just special operation. But of course, any normal person understands it's a real war, a real war, what happens uh, between uh, uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. And of course, if you speak about internet side on these wars that um, we all know about these battles between, let's say, uh, this Russian agency, Roskomnadzor. So against Google, Meta, and so and so about uh, information um, uh, uh, companies from EU, America, and other countries, also from Japan or Australia or Taiwan, etc. Et and of course, also vice versa. Uh, EU has banned it, for example, uh, with state owned um, channels like Russia Today, for example, or Russian Sputnik, and so on and so. So it means this war waging not only on the battlefields in real time, but also via internet and so and so. So please, next slide. Um, also, we know about this famous group, anonymous group versus Russia. And we are trying to attack some uh, Russian agencies, ministries. There were some cases when we have even we uh, have attack against uh, Russian Ministry of Defense. Also, we attacked some uh, Russian TV channels and uh, put information that oh nay, we saw they put some uh, Ukrainian national songs on these channels, and it was let's say. Um, surprise for all Russian, uh, let's say, TV viewers that, okay, it was group was so, uh, let's say. Also, I remember once I, I saw on the Facebook that um, they announced that they will um, uh, take away money from bank accounts in Russia in case Russian troops will not leave Ukraine for, let's say, one day or one week. So it means, uh, okay. So we are now on the next slide. I just put something from Facebook. It's also internet uh, battles. That means informative battles between two countries. And uh, uh, this picture was made by some Ukrainians, as you know, also in Taiwan, that Putin using this Zeta uh, as a symbol for attacking troops. And so there are some Ukrainians exchanged. I will not say these words in Russian, but it means it's very rough. And so with giving some greetings to Mr. Putin that uh, we will beat you at the end, no matter what will happen. Then please, next slide. So this is uh, one picture from a uh, hybrid war in Riga in Latvia. Already two weeks after Russia started this war. So uh, we found some list of papers, again, with, with that. And that some people waiting uh, Russian troops in Latvia. And also after this, it was put on the Facebook as a warning, because also uh, we must be very accurate and uh, everything what happens now in Ukraine also could happen in our country. It depends on us, on Ukrainians, on NATO, and so on. So what we develop of this war in uh, European uh, uh, continent. Okay, next slide. So if we speak on internet uh, from a point of view of international public law. So usually with how we divide uh, territories in international law. So we have territory as a state, it means uh, full jurisdiction, full sovereignty of particular country. Of course, at the nowadays, I think no one country have a 
full sovereignty. Maybe only North Korea have full sovereignty because they're isolated, you know, and they could live without others, you know. But normal, okay, we have with full sovereignty over our uh, territory. Then we have some kind of mixed territories, like, for example, um, exclusive economical zone in the sea waters. It means there are some international relations and plus also some national relations. So these are they calling usually mixed territories. And then, of course, we have what they call international space, like Antarctica or, let's say, outer space and high seas and so on and so on. So it's full international. It does not belong to anybody. And therefore, call this like international uh, space. And of course, uh, because says that for space, it's cyberspace, which is more like international space. But of course, also national countries influence these processes. But we have also uh, we are uh, cyberspace. Okay, please next slide. And uh, today we speak what about to uh, ICANN. And here is uh, uh, this headquarter in LA. As I remember, when I was in in uh, um, in Los Angeles, I have seen this uh, house, but I have never visited. But also, also when I have lectures with students, I usually show this is ICANN. By the way, it um, reminds me always what said the uh, Americans about America. You know, it's cube. You know. And it's usually all these federal agencies in these cubes, you know. And sometimes America says that all these federal uh, federal buildings are buildings of evil because all state institutions are there. But okay, it's a little bit with the jokes and so on and so. Um, okay, uh, next slide. And of course, you know, I can. It's a non-commercial, uh, uh, non-commercial organization and uh, of course uh, probably what they follow me the most it's uh, number three here to achieve broad representation of global internet community it means to make as much as possible people to have access to internet probably i have had i have no confirmation but when mr gorbachev started this process of of glasnost in soviet union in 1985 so in this period of time, it was very close when internet will be launched for mass media already, you know. And uh, some people have said to me that uh, thanks to internet, which was very close to opening for the mass public, let's say, a weapon, uh, Soviet decided, okay, we need these glasses to open borders, you know, open information, so and so. Otherwise, via internet, anybody could access to right information. And therefore, probably for ICANN, the most main idea is to achieve broad representation of global internet community. So as we are now together, thanks to internet, you know, without uh, internet, we could not have this webinar today. So therefore, we are very close to each other. So I have never been in Taiwan, but I could say after these days that I was in Taiwan today. <laughs> and my just opposite, you know. So we are close very uh, to each other after when we're using all these internet uh, possibilities. Okay, please, next slide. Um, and of course, what we speak about uh, today is this split internet versus one internet, you know. Um, in my, let's say, uh, ideas, I'm, of course, I'm support this concept of one world, one internet. Therefore, we all together, you know. But of course, some countries, if they wish, they could make this split internet, as it happens also just now in some countries and so on and so. And also you see here that, okay, uh, if Russians would like to do this, they could make this like Rusnet, what they're calling, and, uh, but of course, in this case, they're isolated in one island without possibilities to easily contact other people in other islands and so on and so. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> And um, what I have uh, seen on some Russian uh, networks and so that um, Russian government has proposed this sovereign internet law. But of course, it means they will make absolute isolation of this country. And um, uh, 
Still, even now, uh, people, if they use internet in Russia, they could find also object information what happens in Europe, in, in Ukraine, you know. For example, my friends in Belarus, and Belarus is a very strange country now. On the one hand, they support Russians to uh, make shooting from a territory to Ukraine. On the other hand, of course, uh, Belarus troops has never crossed Ukrainian Belarus border, you know. So it's how to say it's a very strange situation for them. But still, let's say all people in Belarus, they see all Ukrainian TV channels. They could read Ukrainian uh, mass media, internet mass media, and so so they got a proper information what happens what happens in 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 Ukraine. And of course, um, if one country would like, they could uh, make this by unilateral decision, and they're making some split internet in their country, you know, just for all needs and etc. Et and um, according to this law, what has been proposed, uh, so. Uh, all these internet service providers, in this case, use these exchange uh, points inside only of the Russia. All the points, uh, let's say, approved by this Roskomnadzor, this main agency, which supervises internet in, in, in Russia. Also, let's say, um, uh, these uh, internet exchange providers, now called largest ones, are in Moscow now. Uh, but according to information from uh, MAT technology review, but in the Gauss Donica, we have a lot of these um, internet exchange providers. But probably um, I am not working in IT companies, no, probably we are all leading now to Russia, I'm sure for this, you know. Um, and of course, also theoretically, also Russia could uh, unplug from the global domain CNAME system. Uh, so all this traffic of internet could be only via Russia. But as I said, in this case, we are absolutely isolated from the words and uh, okay, but it this is by one country. If we wish, we could live just in one country, just in one internet and so on and so on. Uh, and of course, as it was said by <coughs> a mate, Mike, a specialist, IT specialist, that uh, alternative DNS can be used to create alternative reality for majority of Russian internet users. It could be done just by one country and uh, make this um, separate internet. Okay, next slide, please. <laughs> and uh, some of my final remarks that, um, uh, of course, um, ICANN itself, it's independent NGO based in LA, in California. And of course, it's not world government on the internet. It's company. And of course, uh, if you remember these demands by Ukraine uh, towards this NGO, you know, um, for in this case, for the state, it's hard to influence non-governmental entity, you know. Um, and it depends on the wish of uh, ICANN to say yes to Ukrainians or no. Of course, they were very neutral and they said that, okay, any person in the world must have access to the internet of the one world, you know. Uh, so also people have said no. But also people from Russia, for example, they still use, let's say, this Telegram, for example, that now. And also on Telegram, it's a lot of information, including supporting Putin and also anti Putin, you know. That means people have more choice for information. It's up to them to use what they listen, what they read, and so on and so on. Uh, we split into the course remains very possible because it uh, will be decided by politicians, not by technology, you know. And of course, uh, if some country decides, okay, we could do it. And uh, other world cannot influence this. They could say, no, no, you must stay in the one internet. No, but okay, one country could say that uh, you would like to have one on internet and so on and so on. And uh, in this case, of course, could be from, uh, let's say, if you look from technical point of view, could be some problems, how to interact between separate internet systems, you know, because uh, I'm not at this specialist, but what I understand is that uh, in this case, there will be some technically incompatible protocols, and they cannot connect uh, between uh, different uh, internet. So let's say, to my opinion, probably in this case, I can must remain neutral, uh, so that also Russian internet users could obtain some reliable information from other sources, not only from the official government of forces, uh, of, uh, let's say, sources. And um, I think that um, in case of split internet, 
freedom of information will be affected. It's my point of view. And of course, uh, if you start to control internet, it could may lead to some censorship of internet. It's also not in fact because internet was done with the main purposes to unite people, exchange information, to communicate, to make webinars, conference, and so on. So these advantages of the uh, world in our days. So uh, this is my final works and remarks. And uh, of course, I would just say my the warmest uh, words to Ukrainians and for their spirit to fight one of the strongest armies in the world. And you still fight, you know, and I hope that you will win this war. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yoni. And I think the people in Taiwan, we do share your opinion very well. You know that uh, Ukraine have a big enemy, Russia. And Taiwan, we have a big enemy, China. Mm -hmm. And the China is uh, doing almost every day to borrow us uh, flying around our, you know, tell, mm -hmm. you know, space, you know. But thank you very much. Okay. Then, I will just say a few words, cool, uh, because uh, please uh, remember one, my, let's say, theorem now, you know. If mm -hmm. Russians will not get some penalty for this, it means also for Chinese, hands is open, you know. <laughs> yep. This is very, very thick issue. Yep. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yep, thank you. And the next one, I like to go. Uh, uh, do you want? Do you have a slide? No, or you can do no. it by yourself. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Xin uh, Shen. I work in National Communications Committee, uh, which is a uh, uh, government and uh, government authority in communications in Taiwan, and. I'm sorry that I, I won't open my camera because my Wi-Fi signal is not very good. So to save the bandwidth for my voice, I shut down my camera. Okay. And uh, you give me two big topics, two big category of <laughs> topics. Which one, which one should I go first or Oh, you can do whatever to... you like. Okay. And so let me talk about the one internet and splinter net uh, questions first. And from technical point of view, uh, I think I think the it it means the uh, unique identifier system. Okay, so, in such a case, uh, I think I can separate into three categories. First, uh, a unique identifier system for the whole world. That is one internet. And uh, the worst case, uh, each nation has its own identifier systems. Okay, that is a splinter net. And beyond the two extreme case, I think uh, some countries, they build their own identifier systems, but such a system might uh, be the same as the, 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 the system I can maintain, the, the same as the system I can maintain. And, uh, but with some, small difference so i will call that a pollution a pollution of the unique identifier system and i think the pollution is the most dangerous thing okay because uh as yanis said it will create a very different internet world for people in different places and I want to make another example that is also try to pollute the 
identifier systems, unique identifier systems. Mm. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, but it's a wide screen now. Maybe some problems with demonstration. Pardon? Yeah, I also don't see the screen uh, of your presentation. Like uh, we can see only the white background. Yeah. Did you share the screen? I don't have a slide, and uh, ah. I close my camera. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. great. Because my Wi-Fi bandwidth is not enough, so <laughs> to keep my voice continuously, I close my camera. I'm sorry. And. I will make an example of the new IP system several uh, the ITU talked about several years ago, which is uh, they use the same IP format, but they change the whole protocols under the IP address. That is, uh, it looks like it looks like uh, where a suit. And of IP IP address, but uh, inside the suit is a total different man. So that is the danger of pollution. They will graduate gradually uh, change the inside of the TCP IP, and finally both the IETF or the ICANN have to step back because of the existing existing users and the existing applications. So I think the pollution is the most dangerous. So of course, it, mo many countries trying to, to have their control of the internet and especially politicians, they always want to have control of the internet and that will make their election very smooth. But in my opinion, uh, the internet is, is not a good idea. And I think no matter the drawbacks we've seen from the current internet. I think one internet is something we should insist. Okay. That's, I'm talking, I finished my talking, thank you. Microphone, please. Kenny, can you do you have a slide, Kenny? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Uh, oh, good. Put it up. Put it up. Okay. Let me share Thank my. Thank you note. for your journey. Good. Can you see my slide? You always have a wonderful slide, no? Okay. I always Can I go enjoy on? it. Can I go on? Yes, please. Okay. Please. okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Kenny Huang. Putting my head out in the internet community. I'm an executive council member of APNIC. I'm going to also going to introduce internet governance in the real world, uh, specifically from internet technical community point of view. So as the topic mentioned, uh, I try to narrow down what is internet governance. I only focus on technical internet governance, not specifically focus on a singular, unified, interoperable, secure, and resilient internet. In terms of the parameter it, it, this, uh, it shows, including the domain name, including the IP addresses, including the protocol numbers. So there you can see that would be the TIG architecture. TIG stands for Technical Internet Governance Architecture. Uh, 
And we can see different country have a country code. For example, like Taiwan, we have second level, we have third level. And also have .com, also Russia, also uh, Ukraine, also has dot, uh, dot .ua. UA. Last all connect to to uh, IANA root, or you can see the root was got was ma managed by TIG community, and you can see the root can be considered as a central gateway, uh, last uh, centralized control uh, all the digital space, in, all the digital space in and out. So I like to just to highlight what would be our concern in terms of public policy governance model. And we can see a two dimension. One dimension is a, is a capability and capacity. Another dimension we need to decrease a differentiate whether it's a public sector or private sector. For example, if in certain regime and um, private sector doesn't not capable to do it and but public sector has a power and has a are more capable to do it, that belong to state regulation. So the governance model will belong to state regulation. On the other hand, if in certain region, for example, like a digital space, cyberspace, uh, less private sector has more capability and uh, has more power to do that, then public space, uh, for example, public sector doesn't uh, not full away of that kind of management in a specific region. So in that situation, we belong to uh, self-regulation. That means the private sector take leadership and making the rule and leading the operation for that specific regime. So anything else will be somewhere in between. So go back to today's topic. I'd like to mention another from financial point of view. And you probably are fully aware about sanction regime. Uh, for example, like a financial sanction, that means that it prohibits uh, transfer of fund to uh, sanctioned countries uh, or freezing uh, asset of a government or company or residence, and also profit, prohibit providing a financial service such as insurance. So sanction region basically uh, come from the three region. One is from EU and EU has a sanction region. Another one is a UN, and UN is from from uh, a Security Council, and less specifically focus on the security and stability uh, violation human rights. And the other sanction region is come from US. US come from the Office of Foreign Asset Control, and although we would call US, but basically US has an ally. Uh, we call G seven. The G seven. Any any sanction order come from the US OFAC will effectively uh, impact the G7 sanction. Uh, so basically, once US follow the sanction, and you can see uh, roughly about 45, 46% uh, global GDP will be impacted. And from Russia, Ukraine war, you can see actually a lot of sanction specific to to uh, to the Russia. A specific individual or specific organization uh, in in Russia, and so if not compliance with the sanction, it's a, a criminal off offense to breach a sanction without authorization. And for example, if any other country within the G7 region, uh, any company who are not willing to follow the sanction order, and they try to transfer money in or transfer asset for for the target individual or target organization, that means they're in compliance with the sanction. That could be a very serious, severe legal uh, legal uh, uh, That can be fine and can be a criminal record as well. That's very serious legal legal issues. So from the list, that would be the first time in history we see uh, the sanction in the internet government region. Oh, we're talking about uh, on the 28th of February this year, and Ukraine, they request I can remove in the I can top level domain, country code top level domain for Russia, like that, that RU and another IDN for the RU and, and that SU stand for Soviet Union. And also at the same time, uh, Ukraine also requests RIPE NCC frozen all the Russian IPv4 and IPv6 addresses space. So, but eventually uh, the official response from ICANN, they reject the request 
again. Also, the response from uh, right NCC also reject the request from Ukraine. So it sounds quite uh, it's quite quite bad situation for for Ukraine. But the real situation is, I can uh, after one week I can remove that SU CCTLD since it doesn't exist in ISO thirty six double uh, thirty one double six one list or oh, less I can. Uh, claim that because the that SU didn't didn't available it's not available in ISO thirty one double six one list, and so I can remove it. And also we also see another response from right NCC and right NCC freeze IPv four and IPv six address spaces. Uh, actually, that space hold by Russian UBO ultimate business a uh, beneficial owner. Uh, that including most of the state-owned ISP. So from this point of view, that means although I can and right NCC officially reject the request from Ukraine, but in reality, and um, one of the uh, CCTLD controlled by Russia that USU has been frozen by ICANN, has been taken down by ICANN, and the majority IPv4 and IPv6 already been frozen by Red NCC, although the Red NCC official reject the request from Ukraine. So you can see the official statement and real reality actually totally opposite. Okay, let's go to the next one. So you can see the legal protocol for economic sanction. As I mentioned, that's the first time uh, in the sanction history, uh, internet resources as considered as economic resources, so put into the sanction list. So the process will be the sanction order issued by the court of EU. So they activate the legal process and submit the order to to uh, TIG stakeholder, uh, for example, like a, a regional internet registry that in Europe is RIP NCC, and they can send this uh, court order to registry registrar, send the court order to ISP, send the court order to platform operator. So all the uh, TIG stakeholder need to do re uh, related action, for example, like a frozen IP address and block a domain registration and terminate internet transit or terminate internet peering and also prohibit online service. So in the, in the same time, uh, a lot of uh, internet advocates that promote another concept is multi-stakeholder imposition of internet sanction. That means uh, the internet organization basically a lot of internet rule and and practice were not from the from the core. Actually, most of the internet rule and internet practice was from internet com developed by internet community. So the advocate they encourage internet community itself should try carefully to develop the sanction order by themselves. For example, like uh, that is a point uh, from the study. This uh, disconnection the population of the country from the internet is a disproportionate dis and uh, inappropriate extension. But from third item, you can see military and propaganda agencies and their information infrastructure are potential target of the sanction. So that means the advocate propose uh, inter uh, for for. For the target country, the military and propaganda agency can be listed as a target of sanction list. So eventually that encourage the internet community, it's time to formation for a new minimum multi-stakeholder mechanism. Using a mechanism to decide whether IP address and dominant for Russia military and Russia propaganda agency should be sanctioned. Uh, lay out a groundwork for the time de timely decision of similar gravity and urgency in the future. And that means if in the future we're going to do the exercise, we better to start in doing something right now. That's from internet a community point of view. So, but basically that's just come from a small group idea, although the small group actually they are powerful because they are representing the, the formal ICANN board member, formal IETF chair. And also if we want to put into real practice, that's a conceptual model for TIG sanction. Uh, you can see from the top layer, the top layer will be TIG policy. That means 
whenever you try to propose, you need to go through multi-stakeholder model, and any issue should be issue as issue statement and going through the policy development process until you obtain the, uh, the consensus from the community. Then once you get a consensus from your target community, then that become a sentient policy and the whole and exercise by internet community. So the second part will be how can we implement that kind of sanction? The second part is once you can define during your policy, you can define a criterion and also define the trigger event. For example, if some certain trigger, some certain event has been triggered, for example, uh, if any country, they just launch the world without any careful consideration. So the, once the criteria match the internet governance policies, then they will release the IP address of domain for the uh, propaganda agencies and for military agency. Then all the internet stakeholders will prohibit or block the IP address and domain name that belong to self-regulate sanction by internet technical community. So, okay. So that pretty much in the future, in the future, if any cyber conflict happen, and we can see there are two kinds of sanction. On top of sanction will be from the official legal court order. So once the court order issue the court order sanction, so all the target stakeholder need to follow the court order. Then. From the bottom, you can see if any trigger event trigger TIG policy, so the TIG stakeholder, they issue TIG self-regulate sanction. That would be happen, and not only would be happen, it already happened right now. So that would be the potential sanction uh, scenario. So the next question would be, uh, Potential internet fragmentation issue. For example, uh, internet IANA root, TIG uh, root, as I mentioned, would be considered as a centralized gateway that uh, centralized manage universal cyberspace. But if any country, whatever country, he want to do in their own internet and trying to propose another whatever route they want and they separate from the internet. So the two link doesn't, it's not interoperable, it's not was insecure because basically probably don't, they don't have any link at all. So in that situation, we can consider that belong to a real internet fragmentation issues. So the, so the, the question we're going to ask would be, what can TIG do? And the TIG can have, what can they do to respond that kind of situation. And the first, can we change T TIG community become a political community? It's not very likely. Uh, that means you need to give up all the TIG policies, all the TIG principle to solicit internet undetermined, undemanding country because they don't have a demand to the global internet, but you try to persuade them to join the global internet. It seems not very effective. It's not in appropriate action. The second, the TIG community do nothing uh, because connecting internet is a political and economic decision. Basically, it's definitely not a technical decision. And also connecting internet only if the risk and value is justified by the target countries and vice versa otherwise. If they don't consider connecting internet will be a, a pass, a, 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 a risk value is not justified, they won't connect to the internet. So the justification also depends on their consideration. So what if the internet keep breaking up? Uh, it could happen. And actually that means it has no value to the our world. So inventing something else instead. So the final one would be all the, all the evolution. Uh, evolution is the nature for all innovation. So if the internet cannot keep its own value, that means we need to invent something else to replace the internet. That's all innovation they do from the history. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, I think I'd like to open the stage and then for the people to ask the question. I think I, I, I already have one from the Henry Chai. 
Uh, the question actually go to Kenny Huang. Uh, Henry asks, is Russia uh, UBOIP taken down by the right? Is because of the sanction of the EC? Do you see the question, Kenny? You need to open your microphone. Sorry, I see the question. My <laughs> response is yes. Sorry, I need to turn on my, my bad. Okay. Okay. Any other question you like to ask uh, the previous? Uh, oh, sorry, can I have a minor correction? Now, basically, okay, the decision from EU court uh, is not direct to an uh, IP address. It just leads to the UBO, and you need to use your own mechanism, your intelligent database, to translate the UBO who own how many digital assets, even cryptocurrency, and you need to dig out how belong. How many uh, digital asset belong to the UBO specific UBO, and conclude that once you dig out the IPv4 address space and IPv6 address space, that put it into the sanction list. Thank you. Okay, and before the people ask the question, I'd like to you know make a little bit comment on the uh, Kenny Huang's last uh, slide. Uh, he kind of suggesting there is a possibility to developing a TIG policy, you know, no matter in the ICANN or in the RabbitCC or whatever. And I think, yeah, yeah it's possible, but will be very political and there will be a lot of debate uh, if, if I understand the ICANN community. Because I think uh, that is uh, a way to do it, but it's not that easy. So that, that is uh, my just a little comment. But of course, uh, never know. You can try. Okay. Anybody okay. want to raise the question? Well. Uh, if not, I actually have a you know couple of questions that like Yanni is <laughs> regarding for the blockchain, you know the cryptocurrency. I do have a uh, many questions about the the, the 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 Bitcoin or cryptocurrency issue. But of course, uh, today we are talking about is the governance. We are not really talking about what is a uh, cryptocurrency in technical or other issues. But from the government gov governance issue, I think the most uh, difficult part is, uh, you know, like uh, what is uh, raised about that is, uh, uh, that is an uh, ogre put it up, you say no refund and no cancellation. And also, you know, I remember, we only actually asked the same question as, as I like to ask. Is uh, um, all the government really worry about the uh, washing money, money laundering, you know? And this is a really issue of the governance for the cryptocurrency. If this kind of issue cannot be resolved, the cryptocurrency will be have uh, some difficult to be accept publicly. I think uh, that is, uh, Yanni, did I say something? Uh, what do you, what is the similar to you? Olga, do you hear me? Yeah, I'm here, you. Uh, sorry yep. for my bad connection for today. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry that I can't switch on my, my webcam. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, I propose to uh, look uh, to this uh, issue from the uh, side of uh, centralized and decentralized platforms. So, so uh, there are uh, some major, let's say, uh, maybe five major uh, and uh, really uh, popular uh, crypto platforms, uh, centralized platforms, and actually uh, they uh, uh, create their own rules, how you can use their platforms. And it's important to admit they uh, give some kind of uh, 
uh, demands uh, or requirements. Uh, uh, for example, uh, you should uh, give your ID card and uh, uh, send to this platform. So uh, it, uh, it's a kind of identification of this person. Uh, you uh, should uh, um, you should uh, um, accept or uh, not accept some kind of transactions in case you are not uh, uh, you are not um, uh, I don't know how to say uh, waiting waiting for uh, those transactions and uh, maybe it's the wrong transaction or uh, maybe uh, I mean not correct uh, kind of asset or a uh, number of assets or uh, so it's just kind of mistake or for example um, for example uh, the um, you are not the recipient of this uh, uh, transaction so uh, you can actually deny this transaction but uh, I should say that uh, we also have the uh, decentralized platforms and uh, they are more spread uh, and more, um, uh, let's say, um, initial in the uh, crypto industry. Uh, so uh, if you're talking about the um, uh, public uh, space and using cryptocurrency in public space, of course, it's important to uh, have the these partners uh, as centralized platforms and create these assets uh, on the centralized platform. Uh, that's why they can give uh, let's say more uh, specific uh, conditions and rules how you can use it and maybe uh, some kind of decentralized platforms uh, can uh, propose you some kind of refunds in case uh, you lose your money and not from your uh, mistake let's say uh, or some uh, question of uh, cyber security and uh, uh, cyber um, literacy but in case of uh, the problem of this uh, central, uh, centralized uh, platform. So if we're talking about, publics, uh, about uh, public sector, of course, uh, we should use only uh, centralized platforms. It's my personal view because mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, the, the only way to find some legal uh, ways how to solve the problems in case they uh, will... Uh, uh, appear in the future but if we are talking about decentralized platforms actually it's more about technical uh, side of uh, these issues so um, as the, all lawyers uh, knows, uh, know that uh, uh, if you don't have some kind of evidence you can't uh, uh, insist on your uh, position uh, I mean legal position uh, so um, it's a problem in uh, the question of decentralized platforms and i believe that uh, again if we are talking uh, about public sector better to uh, for security first of all uh, using the uh, centralized platforms uh, hope you share your opinions okay. too <laughs> <laughs> okay because any actually other it's a complex uh, question yeah. really yeah. <laughs> Any other question? Before we go on the next question, I, is that possible for everyone to turn on your video because the university like to take a photo on the screen? 各位同学，你能不能把你们的屏幕打开？因为学校要拍一张照片，拜托。Okay, I'm sorry, I speak in uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, Taiwanese to tell them to open the video up so they can take a picture. Wow, so good. Oh, don't move. Okay. Don't move. So, Henry, you want to ask a follow up question, please? Henry. Oh, we take a follow up. We take a follow up first. <laughs> okay. Funny that you move that guy, go away. Go away, Tong Shue. Please turn on your video, please. We want to take a photo, please. Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be shy. Yeah, the students still quite shy. <laughs> oh, we see more. 
it's the same situation in Ukraine it's a... with students. Uh, okay, I see any, you ready. Anyone taking Don't a photo? Worry. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Let me see you in a minute. Then. All right, three, okay. two, one. I did. <laughs> okay. I did already. Okay, now let's go on the rest of the question. Okay. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Wow, suddenly all, so many photos disappear. <laughs> Henry, you want to ask the question, please? Henry, open your mic. Oh, yes. Uh, thanks to Go away. Huh? Do you hear my voice? Yes, very okay. well. Okay. In, okay. In uh, I have two questions. That in Kenny's uh, presentation, uh, he mentioned about to develop the uh, IG policy. Uh, TIG policy. Okay. The, the TIG policy to uh, the sanction policy. So, in your point of view, uh, who, where is the best start point? Where should, uh, where should we start the discussion? Uh, which uh, support organization will be the best start point? And the next uh, question is to Natalia, that uh, in, in Natalia's presentation, she mentioned uh, uh, several uh, side effects for uh, shut down the uh, internet for the, uh, to the Russia or uh, or uh, take down the access uh, to the internet uh, uh, of Russia. So do you think that it is not all good to take down the access of Russia to the internet, even even that is the request from the Ukraine? Thank you so much. Okay, uh, I try to read first and then Natalia. Okay, I try to respond the first question from from Henry, and for the in internet um, technical internet community and uh, if we're talking about ascension basically we need to at least from my rough idea at least you should split ascension into several different outcome you expect the first outcome is to taking down a country code and the second outcome would be you try to frozen or delete the ip address the second outcome uh, the third outcome could be uh, you try to block in their uh, domain and registration, not only CCTLD, but for within any GTLD domain and registration. Okay. Talking about the first part for country code, the only place you can di discuss that kind of policy will be ICANN. So basically, uh, for example, I'm chairing the ICANN CCPDP4 working group. And that working group is taking care of part of the lab list job. That means we're going to define the deselection criterion for uh, ID and CCTLD policy. That means if any country code who not fulfill that kind of criterion, and we need to determine the deselection process to take down the country code. So basically, until it has been officially approved by the ICANN, and before that, we still working on the, the older criterion, older scenario, older basic rule, older basic document we still working on. And that kind of task is expected to be finished by end of this year. Then send into uh, the ICANN, ICANN approval process, for, for example, uh, moving to the ICANN board for resolution. And basically one of the ICANN board resolution already effective on 20th of January this year. And that's our first motion making to ICANN. And our second motion to ICANN will be done, submit to the end of this year. So that will be partially cover the topic I'm talking about. And for the IP address space, and basically IP address can be uh, this, the, the place can be decided within the IR community. For example, like in Europe would be right NCC, they can develop their own policy if their community willing to, uh, if their community agree, uh, agree the, the consensus and making become a part of IR policy. And in Asia, also like the APN can make, make, can make in their own policy if and only if the motion can be adopted by their community at large. So it become a resolution, become an official policy.
And the last one will be the regular dominant registration. And that's DM largely controlled by ICANN. So for example, like a GNSO in a GNSO constituency, uh, that would be the place to, to, to address that issue. Uh, that's my simple response. Okay. Uh, Natalia, you want to answer the question, the Henry rest, please? Yes. Um, uh, are you hearing me or I turn off a video? Oh, you, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Very clear. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Daria, translate my answer because uh, I think uh, it's maybe uh, will be more correctly to understand uh, for for us. Um, uh, про заборону взагалі інтернета в в Росії і так далі. Я, я не можу відповідати від імені українського народу, я можу сказати виключно свою думку. Я... Okay, so Natalia want to say that uh, she can... Good. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, it sounds interesting, right? When yes, uh, yes. different languages uh, are <laughs> interacting. <laughs> yeah, so... Hear, like, Ukrainian language. Uh, Natalia, I want to say that um, she cannot represent uh, the view of uh, all Ukrainians in general, but she will try to introduce uh, her opinion because it's really hard to judge about, um, you know, to shut down the access of the Russia uh, based on the reason of uh, war in Ukraine. Because basically this reason affects uh, also another industries, so it's really hard to judge uh, the attention to this problematic. Natalia? Uh, thank you, Daria. Um... Я не прих... Моя думка, я не прихильник будь-якої заборони чого-небудь. Я вважаю, що інтернет, що люди мають отримувати інформацію з різних джерел і відповідно Якщо ми говоримо про, наприклад, росіян, вони мають отримувати різну інформацію. При цьому питання стоїть більш глобальніше. Питання в тому, чи бажають взагалі люди щось інше ознайомлюватися з іншою інформацією. І це питання більше до, держ... більше до державних органів, аніж до інтернету. Тому okay. Okay. я не uh, думаю, що okay. відключивши... Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, the point of view of Natalia is that she is not, uh, you know, quite uh, consider herself when we are talking about the prohibition uh, of, um, you know, possibility uh, to people to access something. So if we will concern the effect of the shutdown, the access of the internet that can negatively affect uh, of the uh, people's rights uh, in Russia, uh, Natalia's opinion is not um, good. And uh, talk, uh, talking generally, it's nice when people can reach information through the different kinds of sources. So Natalia called for uh, open access uh, information in the internet uh, framework. But uh, the problem is how people can, um, you know, analyze this information. Uh, each of us has skills to uh, cognitively think about uh, whether um, some information, um, you know, relate uh, to truth or not. So basically, Natalia's opinion is that each of us has responsibility to justify the information that we can get from the uh, internet sources. So based on the responsibility of each of us, we can justify the effect of the information. But the government also responsible to, uh, to provide some guarantee for people 
uh, that uh, people can ensure and trust for their provided information. So trust here is very important between government and people and the um, self-responsibility of people, uh, how they justify this information is lead on them, uh, neither than on the government itself. Mm -hmm. Наталья, я бы еще половину хотела дополнить свою, то, что я сказала. Треба розрізняти питання, і якщо ми говоримо про у період воєнного часу, мають вживатися, звісно, інші заходи, які будуть направлені на боротьбу саме з пропагандою і з ворожими висловами. Тобто сьогоднішня ситуація, яка склалася в Пропагандії, в Росії та взагалі відсутність, відсутня взагалі будь-яка можливість отримувати інформацію з будь-яких інших джерел і призвела до того, що люди не можуть відрізнити, де правда, а де де є правда, а де є пропаганда. І тут, знову ж таки, це питання саме до державних органів. До державних органів. Окей, so, Наталія, я хочу сумарізувати. Like, the first part of your opinion was about the general point of view that uh, to shut down the access is generally not good for people if you're talking about them rights uh, uh, in Russia. But uh, talking about... Um, the reasonables and the necessity of the shutdown of the access to the internet we have to think about uh, um, the ground for these reasons and the ground is uh, talking about the european union perspective uh, european union, union law always apply the principle of the necessity and the principle of ne uh, proportionality <laughs> so the necessity here is that we need to differentiate the proper time of this request because uh, the time is uh, the full soul of war in Ukraine so there's a reasonable necessity to have some limitation uh, of this access talking about the necessity uh, so this request is reasonable and uh, the responsibility uh, to you know, to analyze uh, the truth or false information have to lead to the responsibility of the government. On another hand, talking about the principle of proportionality, uh, we need to think about um, how government can proportionally or how government can balance uh, the fake and false information. So basically, the proportionality principle is very important for the government governance over the internet. And because the government uh, in Russia uh, not respond, um, uh, not, not respond uh, um, on the face of Ukraine as a true source of the information, so that is a problem. But people here, um, uh, people there um, do their best, you know, to access uh, the proper sources and so on. But uh, because the government did not provide uh, the appropriate measures, you know, to organize uh, the differentiation of the proper sources who provide this information, but the evidence of this information, and uh, this lead to the disbalance of the trust between people and uh, disbalance of the relationship uh, between citizens of in Russia and uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. I think the time is uh, uh, it's up about four minutes after nine in Taiwan. And first of all, I thank you all my speaker, Olga, Natalia, Yanni, and Senchin Chong, and Kenny Huang. And I think uh, let's uh, give all the speaker approach. You know, they uh, really did a wonderful work today. And thank you very much. Thank you a lot. And this is the end of this session. And just like uh, Yanni said, hopefully next time it's a physical, we can see each other, <laughs> not on the screen. 
OK， 拜拜。